Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome to the show. It's not going to blow. I'm George McGarrity, and I am here to say I'm from Easy. Yes. Hello and welcome, guys. Uh, this is Music on Air. I'm your host, Kevin Glavin. Today we're here, as you all know already, with George from Easy. Satin. How's it going, George? You good it's, today? It's going. I'm pretty good today. Yeah, had a had a good day. Yeah. Yeah. It's all going well. So, unfortunately, guys, we expected to have a good couple of the band here, but due to I make up, I make up for it in sheer personality. You do I'm indeed. Like, I'm like five people's <laughs> worth of person. Yeah. So, unfortunately, it's just George today. Or fortunately, yeah, shall we say? Yeah. Um, so we're going to kick the show off today This is the first of Music On Air Which is basically going to put you guys At the forefront of the unsigned uh, The unsigned scene Of the west of Scotland uh, So This is going to run over three weeks Or three different shows And they're going to be approximately half an hour each guys And we'll just basically sit down and have a wee conversation Today we're, as I said Sitting with George from Easy So Tell us a bit about yourself, George. Well, where are you from? What do you do? Uh, what do, you do? I'm originally from Aberdeen. Aberdeen. Um, I've been playing music in some capacity since I was about eight. I used to play the cello until I got to about grade three. So that would have been start of secondary school. Uh, by this point, I'd already seen the movie School of Rock. And <laughs> in that movie, the cello player learns how to play the bass guitar. And uh, that was a pretty like definitive moment in my that musical is a good career. Scene. I do love um, that scene. So I got a bass guitar long before I got lessons. It was just sitting in the house, and I was like, "One, one day, one day, I'm going to play this." And that day came, and maybe, maybe first or second year, where I plucked up the courage to tell my cello teacher I didn't want to play cello anymore. Um, and that's when start. I got a few, a bass lessons for a few years, um, and then started playing in a band. <sighs> What age are you in third year? Like 15, 14, 15? Yeah, about 15, probably. Right. Um, so when I was about that age, started playing in a band. That was the most valuable musical experience for me. The music we played is not the music I play now, but if I hadn't done that, I wouldn't be here today. No way. But I um, started playing in a band. I was about 15. I moved away for uni for the course, in particular, commercial music. Just felt a lot more me than I mean the other one in the cards was archaeology at Edinburgh so I mean I could imagine a very different guy if I'd done that there let's talk about easy then so you've got how would you define the genre of easy because it's very like uh, broad good and question um we tend to say funk funk but at the same token is that it's there's plenty of soul the songs that we're going to show you later none of them are what easy Best? No, that's a lie. We're we're good. At, I was gonna say best, at, but it's not like it's all our music. But um, the ones we're gonna play are more bluesy and soulful. But oh, right. we do have, especially now in our newer set, a lot, lot, a lot funkier. But uh, so, potential how did you? You said you met through the the course of commercial music. Is mm-hmm. uh, how did you guys decide? Was it the was it the first year band thing that you just got put together, or was it? Um, um so. John and Lewis, our drummer and one of our guitar players, they have known each other for years before this and they played together in a host of different items. And then first year came in for a live performance, Lewis, our drummer, and Mo, well, Ross, or Moss, uh, our piano player and one of our singers, they were paired together in their band. So they collabed and wrote music together and they were obviously a good gel as well. So at this point, Lewis, John... Moss had all played together. Well, John hadn't played with Moss, but they'd all gelled together. And then I met John and Lewis through living at the halls, and we just hit it off as pals and just had very, very similar interests in music and um, cool man, similar ability. And then Chris was friend had been playing with Moss for years. They've known each other through school, so it was kind of it's kind of like the universe just put us all in the right place at the right time. Man. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's your EP from last year is that correct? Yeah. That's good. It was. Yeah. Yeah. Last year. Correct. Yeah. Um, it's weird. Time seems to fly. <laughs> uh, so what was that EP called? Was it just like? It was called, called Easy Does It. Easy Does It. And uh, funny story about this, we wanted to do something different with it, uh, rather than just put punch putting out online and then selling CDs. So instead, we sold these. Customized wristbands that you know these like kind of like slap around your wrist things. Yes. Right. So they were white with easy does it in pink, but it was also a USB, and on the USB you had the songs which you could also listen to online, but they also had like um, videos of other studio, just 
uh, like a trail. We released a kind of like teaser trailer through our f- incredible filmmaking friend, a guy called Tom Alner. Definitely, if you ever need a filmmaker, check this guy. He's amazing. Um, he put a wee thing together for it, so it was kind of like a sort of pack. So rather than buying coming to the gig and buying a CD, you said turned up, you paid your ten pounds, and you got a T-shirt, this wristband that had like all this cool stuff in it and oh, some stickers. That's cool man. <laughs> So that's you, quite a cool idea, man. Did you sort that out with, like, did you notice a difference in, like, record sales or anything like that? Um, that? I would say the gimmick probably helped us sell them a lot fast because it's, I mean, when's, I mean, we had this big EP launch and um, we made a fair bit of money back from that, which we then were able to use to fund, like, a wee tour off the back of that. We played in Dundee, Edinburgh, Glasgow. Um, I think we did another air gig. Um but yeah, we we sold, yeah we sold out of those the original set of those wristband things. To my knowledge, we punked them Interesting, all. Interesting, it, it was really cool. I think people just dug the, the idea of alternative source of music. Nice. So, so this is Betty by Easy. There's a man in my bed, got no care on Helsinki, living in my bedroom. I stare at the sky, I don't know why, maybe it's some destiny, but the memory of
tames and bring back my memory. That was Betty by Easy. So, uh, we're just discussing there the you took a strange like approach to recording that song. Is that correct? Yeah. So I'll explain again. Uh, the we. A, a roommate of mine was doing for their fourth year project. They wanted to record us, so they had to do, they had to record us in a way that was different to how they recorded before. So they did that by saying, "We'll record you live." You know the way, the way they do it in radio ones live. That was the that was the sort of the idea. Um, but doing that short notice, trying to do, we tried to get how many songs did we get? That must be like what, one, two, three, like five songs done, in like I don't know how many hours we had. Maybe six hours was but then like we all would be playing the song in the same room at the same time and trying to isolate the tracks is near impossible when you do that because it's just coming out of amps so everything's bleeding so if there's like someone messes up which happens so many times you have to redo the whole song and it was just it was a very stressful experience but we got it done in the nick of time um but yeah you definitely come out as stronger musicians work at gelling together when you've had to rely on each other so strongly <laughs> how does the writing process usually go with your bands it always just okay. like someone brings something or yeah usually um we do it the songs really develop collectively though so originally we might have even just like the concept of a song sometimes but i mean moss is really good because that's what he does he's like the he's the mo him and chris are really active songwriters and they do stuff in their own time, so they'll bring sometimes fully fleshed out songs. But they always, they always get like a hint of we call it easyfying the music. <laughs> so I think I've already said that before. But like the the band sort of puts like a signature on it that you could never get on our own. Yeah. You know, like that song changed a lot. Um, there's one actually that we used to play as a as a as a hip hop group. That was a ve- it was very different kind of vibe. It was quite like it's quite rocky and stuff. But it's all centered around this bass riff that has now changed, but has had been consistently the same since John first came up with it back in like high school. So like maybe like third year of school or, uh, of secondary school or whatever. And, um, <laughs> he's played it in, as like five different songs, the same the same like concept going round and round. So then it became a hip hop song. So we've seen it as a hip hop song and now a funk a funk number that we are playing live right now we're not going to record it for a little bit i don't think but um like for him and lewis the our drummer who've known each other for ages they have both seen this go through so much changes but it's now i would say that has really been easyfied if i'm going to yeah. use that word again yeah. um it's got a real freshness to it that he's got any like work that you're doing currently that you just want to discuss mm-hmm. so like within the band yourself okay. um so we have just we recorded what maybe a month or two ago um a track that uh that called bring, uh, bringing me down that is it's very what easy is now it's very what we're really going for and that we're going to re- record a music video before we release that so that probably won't be till probably won't be till after christmas there's no date on that don't quote me on this <laughs> everything could change but it's probably not gonna be till after christmas but uh, I'm going to move on to the second track now, if that's all right. So this one's called what, sorry? Uh, Bring Me That Beat. Bring Me That Beat by Easy, and this is off, start again, their uh, debut EP.
talk about it. The second track for music, I've forgot the name of that one. Man, uh, bring me that beat. Bring me that beat. That was uh, any big things these are really looking for. Like. I mean, personally, I'd like to play more festivals. We played Party at the Palace this year, um, which is good fun. But either to get a higher slot at Party at the Palace or even um, to a something at Teen the oh, Teen the Park. Man, I'm running. I don't know what the rules are with Teen uh, the Park anymore. I think it's Transmit this year. It's still uh, Transmit, yeah. right? whatever whoever it is uh, whatever it becomes uh, <laughs> play something like that I don't know play more festivals would be my big one as far as big long long term goals to be able to make money just playing music there you go that is like <laughs> everyone on this course's answer to that question I think that's every yeah. musician just dreaming <laughs> to be able to survive yeah. <laughs> so speaking of gigs guys I've just got a little shout out that I need to make here uh, there's a gig coming up on the 25th of November and it's called Soundscape. It's for charity. Um, it's set up by some of the people on the course that we're doing, the commercial music course, and it's in aid of the Element Service and Music in the Hospital Scotland. It will be in the Community Central Halls in Mary Hill. Tickets are £5. There will be free, cheap alcohol, sorry, not free alcohol. <laughs> uh, and... Myself will actually be playing that gig there, so I'll be a bit of shameless self-promotion there. Just, um, so get us yourself along to that, guys. That's the 25th of November. Our doors are at half seven, and that's Soundscape. So back to Easy. Move on to the third track now, if okay. that's all right. So this is, again, another one from their debut EP. Um, it's almost as if that's all I've brought with me. <laughs> who would have known? <laughs> Um, so what's this one called, man? Uh, this one's called Hungry. It's a bit like a follow-on from that last one. Hungry. It's, it's so this is Hungry by Easy. Hope you enjoy, guys.
nah, that was a lovely little instrumental piece by Easy there. Um, that was quite interesting. There's a little bit about next week's show. The All the information for the show, guys, will be on our website, which is uh, musiconair.wordpress.com. Uh, air is spelt with a Y, obviously, given that we are based in the west of Scotland, in Air. Uh, and basically all the information for the next show will be on there, but we are, next week we will be bringing on a band from Glasgow called Cryptic Culture, and pre- hopefully more than just one of them will show up this time. Yeah, 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 <laughs> nah, yeah. uh, even if one of them does show up, it's always going to be a good show. Uh, I'd like to extend my gratitude to George for coming out and having this little conversation with us. No worries, man. Uh, it's been great having you on the show. It's been good talking yeah, to you. It's been good being here. Uh, Yeah, so tune in in two weeks' time, guys, which will be the 3rd of December when we broadcast this. If you're listening to it on SoundCloud or YouTube afterwards, then why? Why are you not just listening to it live? (laughs) Uh, Yeah, so thanks very much for listening, guys, and we're going to be played out by another track by Easy. What's this one called? Uh, Millennials. Millennials. So uh, thanks for listening. This is Millennials by Easy. Peace.